Okay, welcome to game six. This is Rick and Gary. That was around the world. What the hell was that? There we go. There you go. You throw it way to the left. It wrapped around all the way to the other side. Like a dog healing. Do that again. We'll take four. Get it again. I'll measure that. This is Dan and Mike. the point so hard to see those back back shoes depth perception really messes with me anybody anybody Bueller why don't we go so that's Dan against Mike Mike is from the two baggers he is the captain Captain of the two baggers. Oh man! Could you have ticked that any worse? I don't know. You got four of them, man. You almost knocked it off. Oh, Rick, right on. Centered, centered shoe, but looked like it was uh, under rotated, actually, or actually over rotated. Uh, uh, yeah, I think over, over, under rotated, because it didn't sit down. It was uh, sort of standing up for him. And that means the toe hit toe hit before it hit the ground. The heels hit the ground and just bounce backwards. I've been there, done that. Spend many hours working on uh, making my shoe land flat. <clears throat> and in that in that practice session, all I do is just basically. Don't care about 40 feet. I don't really care about hitting the stake. I basically want the shoe to land flat and not do uh, what I call a tire roll or a bounce and flip. Like Rick has, uh, Rick's are so fast and low that even if he lands them flat they tend to jump up in the air and uh, get another couple of flips in and most of the time they land on the stake <clears throat> but I don't get that lucky bounce because I basically try to land mine flat flat and at 40 so and that's uh, I, I spent probably a month with a about 20 to 30 minute practice a day in that month just landing them flat <clears throat> see he almost got another flip that was actually a very slow thrown shoe right there he usually throws them a little little lower and a little faster if he would have thrown them faster that would have been flipped on <laughs> one for Gary Nice. It's on. 
<laughs> the game we're in, we don't even hear anybody talking, but game five, where when I'm playing and Willie's playing, we're like, <laughs> we're like loud as hell. Um, he matched that one, top that one, top ringers. <laughs> <laughs> we got one point for Dan on that one. There, beautiful shoe. Nice arc. Nice, calm swing. Same as that one. That was a very good shoe. Almost duplicate. Just uh, landed on some steel and took a took a bad bounce. That's that's the shoe Rick's probably probably looking for continuously. I'm sure that those two felt really good to him. Top ringer, or I'm sorry. Two dead, one point, Gary. I like that, Malcolm. <laughs> Dragonfly's probably going, yeah, 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 that's it. Dragonfly's too nice. He don't he don't bring that stuff up. Malcolm's like, hey, you're not calling him right, dummy. No, he didn't say that, but <laughs> the way we call him is the way we've done it for twenty years, so it's a bad habit just saying top ringers, but everybody knows what we're talking about. What I'm finding out, though, is uh, there's a lot more backyard players than there are sanctioned players. Finding that out through Facebook. Dan hits... Uh... I must have missed something. Was that my score? Scores all messed up. I don't know. Sometimes when I get talking, I forget to mark the score. But they are right according to this uh, scoreboard on the screen, so we're all set. Nope. <laughs> yeah, Gary Gary still has a chance to push it on. Not anymore. It's got steel in between there. And Gary took the point too. Yep, saw it from here. Saw it from here, I did. That's basically wide open. So Dan should get some points off of this. Right at 40 feet. His, his big thing is he doesn't land him flat. <clears throat> there you go. That's flat. Take three on that one. Yep. Oh, look. We're, 
<laughs> Dragonfly Malcolm. Hey, uh, we're done over there. So that was about a little less than a 10-minute game. That's uh, game five. And since we're in game six, you already saw game five, and we won it. On and off. And that's another one. It went three quarters away around the stake. Came in the front, spun all the way around. Came in at six o'clock and flew off at nine. And not once did it even think about grabbing a hook, grabbing a cleat. That's another one. Another one not landing flat for Dan. There you go. Yes. See how that lands flat? When they land flat, they stay. Oh, that was on and off. And that wasn't that wasn't that high either. <clears throat> that was not that high. I, I would guess only about six or seven inches on off the uh, material so that was a pretty that was a pretty good thrown shoe just when it came down it hit uh hit dan's and did not grab either oh good first shoe good good second shoe Three. Three we go. I plan on doing something that nobody's ever really tried. And uh see what it see what it uh, how it turns out. I'll uh, I'll be billing them and taking them to a our home courts, see what see what they look like. And I'm sure there will be a video on YouTube showing what I'm talking about soon. <clears throat> Nobody home. So it goes back into Rick's hands. And Rick has been doing pretty damn consistent. So I'm expecting that this will be the last last throw. Regardless of what Gary does. Unless Gary puts one on. Oh. All right, so I'm saying he puts a ringer on. That's my guess. And then we're done. Here it is. Now he's going to throw a second one, and it's sitting on steel, so anything can happen. <laughs> Willie. Willie's 40 feet away, giving a play-by-play. <laughs> All right. Good game. Good game, Rick. Thanks for watching.